Brakathia Hawu, Brakathia Hawu, Shai, Brakathia Hawu, Brakathia Hawu, Shai, Brakathia Hawu, Brakathia Hawu, Bashim Yahu, Shai, Bahashim, Rakal Kudash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. Salutations to the whole for the elect out there, you Akim to Sadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the priest Shaman, this week's topic is going to be entitled Beetlejuice. The inspiration for the show comes to the fact that you had the priest Yashalom put something in the, in the this chat where <coughs> they put in beetles, crushed beetles in some of these juices, I think orange juice or, you know, you know, Esau puts all types of abominable bullshit and everything, man. So we're not going to be over-righteous and skim every single thing because, you know, um, we won't need shit, man. You know, damn everything we put. Scripture says in the book of Ezekiel, the fourth chapter, we're going to eat our bread defiled among the Gentiles. That's not a license to throw some goddamn bacon, egg, and cheese down your, your mouth. I'm just saying, when you get all into the every single technical um, hydroglycosin, all everything, you know, you're just going to end up bugging yourself out. That's not the point of the lesson. The point of the lesson is how important it is to go into the Hebrew. All right, because the first thing I thought to my mind was, I know there's certain scriptures in the English translation that says it's acceptable to eat, to eat a goddamn beetle, which is not, you know. And you wouldn't know that without going into the Hebrew, because you have certain guys that downplay the Hebrew. Look, we're Hebrew Israelites, it's our language, we have to speak it, we have to study it, and we have to learn it. You can't just, oh, break it down into English, brother. Nah, there's certain, how, what, we're going to go around saying we're going to celebrate Easter, you know. But this one particular situation that he let me bring to mind going into the Hebrew. This is uh, something called this is Beetlejuice's article from 2011. Yesterday, Fergus Fitzgerald, head brewer of Adams, told Debugged about his plight to keep pigeons, cockroaches, and bats out of his vats. But there are some food and beverage manufacturing who like to include insects in their products. It's not a particularly pleasant thought, but you might have consumed beetles without even releasing. <laughs> without even realizing, pardon me. We consumed all types of shit, man. Without even realizing, because we're in this man's wicked, defiled system. You know? Scripture says you're going to eat poison and live, Mark 16, right? So, a lot of stuff that the so-called white man mass produ produces, who done told all types of shit that fell in them vats that we're not supposed to be touching or eating, right? <laughs> Unless you have your own farm and you're growing your own fruits and vegetables, man, it's very difficult to avoid these curses. If you ever come across a pink, purple, or red soft drink, chances are it contains carmine, also called co coenil, which is a coloring ingredient made from crushed beetles, various brands of grapefruit, strawberry, pomegranate, or cranberry juices also contain the ingredient. If you're curious, check the label for any mentions of carmine, Corneal or E120. And this could be endless, bro. This could be endless, you know. I mean, I'm going to look out for that. I'm going to look out for that and make sure, you know, that don't happen. You know, you try your best. But I'm just saying, you know, it could be endless trying to spot every single thing that Esau puts in this shit. And furthermore, this man's a liar. He don't even have to tell you what's in there. You know, but, you know, we do our best, man, you know. Anyways, this is Leviticus 11 and 22. It says, Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. See, so this is why you can't just break things down into English. Because somebody reading this English translation will say, Oh, see, the Bible says you can eat beetles. But then when you go to the Hebrew now, right, the word is, uh, Charag. Let me, Char. Hargal, Hargal, a kind of locust or leaping creature, right? So it's a kind of a locust. Now, when you go into your commentaries, and I'm not gonna say every single commentary is on point, but you know when it's you know you go through the spirit, you could tell. You go through a few of them, and none of them commenters are gonna tell you that's a beetle. This is the John Gill commentary, one of my favorite commentaries. It says which. When, and when you go to this part, and the, the bead laughs at his kind, it says, which is another sort of locust called chargo. It should not be rendered a beetle. For no sort of beetles are eatable, nor have legs to leap withal, and so 
come not under the general description given of such flying, creeping things fit to eat. Right. And beetles, you have a dung beetle that they deal with shit. So you're not going to eat no beetle. You know, the locusts and the grass apple, they deal with grass. Let me see another commenter. I want to look at this other commenter where he says, uh, it is, this is the Barnes commentary in the uncertainty of identifying these four creatures. It has been suggested that some of the, the name may belong to locusts in an imperfect state. All right. So hold on. There's another one where it pretty much goes into, pardon me, bear with me now. There's a bridgeway. Not that one. Is a pool. You know, it's all pretty much saying locust, but one of them tells you that uh, that pretty much what we're looking at here is different forms of locust grasshoppers. Oh, let me go back to uh, let's compare some of these different translations. Let's look at some different translations for what they got in Leviticus. 20 let's see here we go ASV even these of them you may eat the locust after his kind and the ball locust and the cricket and the grasshopper right so different form of locusts and grasshoppers and crickets what else they got you know pretty much that they deal with um grass BSB of this you may eat any kind of locust Katie did cricket or grasshopper. Let's see, yep, here we go. Crickets and grasshoppers. Seen a lot of crickets, grasshoppers, and locusts. You know, same family pretty much. Easy English. They include the locust, the cricket, and the grasshopper. So certain translations, you know, hitting more the point than the King James translation on that particular scripture. You know, overall we use the King James, but some of these, you know, translating the Hebrew. See, if, the, if we were speaking Hebrew from the jump and we didn't have to use this bastard tongue, there would be a lot better understanding of these scriptures. All right? Not just from a translation standpoint, but the culture. All right? And the force of things being said in that language. You know, anytime you translate something, a lot get lost. There's a term called lost in translation. Right? See, I've seen grasshopper. Uh, you know. Yeah, but the point's pretty much been made, man, that we're not supposed to be consuming no beetles, but that but the King James, the English version rather, is saying eat beetles. So you see the point of what? Going into that Hebrew and studying. So it's not just oh break it down in English. No, we gotta do some studying. This is Second Timothy two and fifteen. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto the most high, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Cause somebody might press you about that on the streets. And if you didn't do your studying, you know. Then you might get hemmed up if you're just breaking things down in English. And that's what a lot of these people in the world do. Just break it down in English. The Bible is written in Hebrew, man. Including the New Testament. It was translated in Greek, man. Because what? We're Hebrew Israelites. Can't stress that enough. Now, this is an excerpt, a part of Ecclesiasticus. The first chapter in the prologue. Right? It says... Let's see now... Right here, it says, For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue, because, you know, when you go into the Sirach, it was taken out of Hebrew and translated into Greek. It says, For the same thing uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. See that? So it's like a dilution, you know, and it could, all, and it could often lead to confusion. So, going into the Hebrew, and the beautiful part about going into Hebrew, you can understand, paired with understanding the manners and customs of the time when the scriptures were being written, it shares a greater deal of understanding, and that's what we do. That's why we go into these lessons, all right? That's not going to be going to different scriptures, and all that means that in the Hebrew, and you know? So, I figured that was a quick to the point on that situation. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. The blinds to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone with you well. And salutations to the whole for the elect out there. You are to the that do this thing in the most truth and sincerity. Shalom.